Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In today's video, we're covering example one from section 4-2 in the Savas Realize Algebra 2 textbook. The goal of today's example is to rewrite a rational function to identify its asymptotes. And so what they do is they give us a fraction here. Notice there's the same power for the x's. And it says to rewrite this function using long division. And what they want us to do is compare the result with the reciprocal function and then to sketch the graph. So let's go ahead and let's start with that long division. So remember when you do long division, the top of the fraction goes inside the division house and the bottom of the fraction goes outside. And then we have to ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply times x to make it equal 4x? Well, that would be a 4. So if I go to do this, 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Now, it might help you uh, visually to, to put a plus 0 here, just because it's technically a missing term, but it's not necessarily something you have to do. So then remember, put the parentheses around it to subtract, because you have to subtract both of these terms. So 4x minus 4x is 0, so they cancel out. And 0 minus negative 12 is like having 0 plus 12. So I have a 12 for my remainder. Now this remainder, it can be written as a fraction being added on here at the top where you have that uh, divisor as the bottom of the fraction. Now when I go to discuss uh, g of x here, I'm going to flip this order just to make it a little easier to see this part, okay? So I'm going to put the 12 over x minus 3 first, and then the plus 4 next. Can you all start to see where it's the same thing, but we're doing some transformations to it. So we're subtracting a 3 from the input there. We're adding a 4 to the output here. And then uh, we're multiplying it by 12. So what we have is, is we have what are called transformations to the function. Now these transformations are the same to every single function. It's just this one's been a little bit reordered. Instead of having the a out front of the x minus h, they, they move it to the top because there's a 1 there normally. And then the x minus h, technically it's to the negative first power, which moved it downstairs. And so what this is going to do is this is going to enable us to talk about some of the transformations. Remember, the k here, it's going to translate your graph up or down. So this is going to translate up by 4. With our h's, if you subtract a number from the x value, we're going to translate, when it's subtraction, feels backwards, so to the right, by 3. And then this 12 is our a value, so this is going to be a vertical stretch of the function. So I'm going to do a, a very rough sketch. I'm not even going to put graph paper down. I'm just going to try to get us where we need to go. So I know I'm going to translate up by 4. Alright, so what that means is that I, my horizontal asymptote, which is normally on the x-axis, is going to scoot up by 4. And then I'm translating to the right by 3. So my axis, my vertical axis, instead of being on the y-axis, is going to scoot over to being at, to the right by 3. Now this 12 is going to be hard to see because of my graph. But that 12 is saying when I go one unit to the side here, it's going to go up by 12, and then it'll make that curve. So just be aware that it's going to be like way up there. But this is very roughly 
what this will look like. Now we can go ahead and we could calculate where our x and y intercepts are, right? Like if I plug in a zero here, I'd get negative four um, plus four, which is zero. So really our graph should have gone through zero, zero. And that's just because it's stretched so far out. But my main point is here to, to show you how to find the axes and just to, to use your A value to find out where the other points would be. So again, that's a very rough sketch. All right, so now these guys are wanting us to do kind of the same thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use my long division. Remember to put your plus zero here or it's gonna be a little strange for you. So what multiplies to 2x to make it look like 6x? Well, that's a 3, because 2x times 3 is 6x. And then 3 times 1 is 3. And then I put my parentheses and subtract. So 6x minus 6x cancels out. And 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So I'm going to write that as a remainder, as a fraction right here. So when I go to describe this as f of x, I'm going to put my fraction first, and that minus in front of the fraction is going to scoot up here next to the 3. That way things are a little more clear for us. And then this big 3 is going to move to the back with a plus 3. So let's talk about what we're going to see here. So if I set this denominator equal to 0, this is going to get me my vertical asymptote. All right, so I'm subtracting 1 and dividing by 2. All right, so this is my vertical asymptote. Now my horizontal asymptote is just right there. It's y equals 3 because they're moving it up by 3. So there is my horizontal asymptote. So if I were to do a, a very rough sketch of this graph, I know that I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. And I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 1 half. Now here's where things are a little quirky. So this negative 3, you're going to have a reflection and you're going to have a stretch. And so what that means is that instead of having the graph that goes like this, you're going to have a graph that goes like this. And so don't be surprised by it flipping upside down like this. All right, so it's going to go like this and like this, roughly. All right, so let's go ahead and try it for one more. I'm going to try to put some division lines on here because I got a little wild, didn't I, with my space taken up there. So my long division. I have x plus 0 divided by x minus 6. Well, my x is already matched. I'm going to have a 1 here. So I multiply 1 times x minus 6, and then I subtract. My x's cancel out, and 0 minus negative 6 is a positive 6. So for my remainder, I'm going to put plus 6 over x minus 6. And then we're going to rewrite this by flipping that order. So I have 6 over x minus 6 plus 1. Here's my function. And so in terms of graphing, let me change colors. Um, my horizontal asymptote is going to be at um, y equals 1. And my vertical asymptote is going to be at 
x equals 6. All right. Now there's no reflection here, so this is going to be my, my general shape of my graph, right? And so with a stretch of 6, what that's saying is when I move one unit to the side, it's going to change by 6. So this isn't going to be very close to the axis. It'll be something probably like this. And again, if I want to figure out where it's crossing x and y, I could plug in x and y for zeros here. I mean, separately, but one at a time. And I could figure out where my intercepts are. I just don't care about it very much right now. You guys won't have to graph it by hand, so I'm not um, terribly concerned. Just that you guys can find the asymptotes is fine. So there we have it. That's uh, rewriting a rational function to identify its asymptotes. Until next time.